Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Slavery is defined as a condition of having to work very hard without proper reward or appreciation. Human trafficking, the modern day slavery. Last week I spoke about mental slavery, but this week I want to highlight another form of slavery, human trafficking, specifically in Nigeria. For the benefit of those who don't know, it is the illegal trade of people for exploitation or commercial gain. Today, it is a $150 billion global industry. Two thirds of the total revenue are generated from commercial sexual exploitation, while the rest is from forced economic exploitation, such as domestic work, agriculture, and other economic activities. And as they say, Niger Nugu carry last. Nigeria has been identified as a source, transit, and destination for human trafficking. According to the latest Global Slavery Index uh, report of 2018, Nigeria ranks 32nd out of 167 of the countries with the highest number of slaves. 75% are trafficked across the state, while 23% are within states. 2% are trafficked outside the country. The National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, in their 2019 report, found the average age of trafficked children to be 15. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, has found that 94% of all Nigerian women trafficked to Europe from, for prostitution hail from Edo, Edo State, that is, with Italy as the number one final destination. A December 2018 UN report notes that the vast majority of Nigerian migrants witness or experience unlawful killings, gang rape, prostitution, arbitrary detention, torture and inhumane treatment, on page wages, slavery, racism and xenophobia. A UNESCO 2006 report ranked human trafficking as the third most common crime in Nigeria after drug trafficking and economic fraud. Human trafficking is undoubtedly big business and low risk as players are generally allowed to operate with impunity. Though the current governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has launched the Edo State Task Force Against Human Trafficking with Delta State following suit, human trafficking is still on the rise. This is because poverty remains the number one factor rendering women and girls vulnerable to sex trafficking. Other factors such as parental pressure, eroded mindsets through values, uh, cultural acceptance of prostitution, limited education and economic opportunities are certainly contributing factors. Nigeria being the poverty capital of the world, it is not difficult to see why we are ranked so high. I therefore propose that the following measures are required to curb this evil practice. Government engagement, empowered communities, and access or opportunity to live a life that is dignified. Cognitive stroke behavior restructuring and economic development focused on poverty reduction and wealth creation should be included in this approach, especially for the survivors. Yeah, you, yeah I always say this jokingly. If you know the amount projected for sex annually in Nigeria, <laughs> triples our national budget. Mm. Um, as we are talking here now, money is exchanging hands somewhere mm. over sex. 
And so, um, you agree with you, cultural value, pressure, and then, most importantly, you find out that these days our, we have this completely, you know, forgot about morals in our society. It's about the money. Mm -hmm. Once you get the money, you are worshipped, you are celebrated. Nobody cares how you made it. That's mm. why people who ordinarily those days would be outcasts in our communities are the ones collecting chief testy title mm -hmm, today. Mm -hmm. And so everybody would want to make money irrespective of how you make it. You make it. I had a friend then who told me he would rather be a prisoner in London than be a free man in Nigeria. It's that no, bad. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with what Libras is saying. You know, I think sometimes when we look at poverty, we, we just look at poverty. But I'm glad you, you broke it down because one of the things I read about when to do with uh, human trafficking is that the traffickers are the real cause of human trafficking. So people who are ready to exploit other people, yeah, they're poor. But it takes somebody without conscience to want to exploit uh -huh. their poverty mm -hmm. for them to put them in a position where a lot of them are promised regular jobs. When right. they get there, they seize their yeah. passports and then they make them work as mm -hmm. sex slaves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not as simple as just poverty. It's, it's about people who don't have, uh, do you say, a conscience that yeah. are ready to say, look, I'll, I'll. And then I like the fact that you pointed out that a lot of the um, human trafficking is internal. Mm. So we're maybe overlooking things like the young children people take to That's their homes. It. They don't give them an education. They're just mm. slaves in and your house. And they treat them badly. Yeah, and they don't feel any responsibility to invest in this human being. You know, yes, it's one thing to say, I'll train you, I'll take your child off you. You know, maybe you have too many children and you're too poor to train them. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to have them in your home, practically working hours mm -hmm. and treating them like a, a slave. And you don't even look at this child and say, I want to make an investment so that when you leave my house, you can even get married from my house. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the kind of conscience we don't seem to mm -hmm. have. You mm -hmm. know, we don't seem to see that this child is your child the minute you take them under your roof. Yeah. So these oh, are the kind ward, of things yeah. that we need to sensitize yeah. ourselves towards. You know, I, I've spoken with, um, with uh, a house help before. And uh, I just asked, what's, what's your name? She mentioned something. How said, old? About I, how old? And I asked about, about 15. Okay. And I said, for real, where are you from? She said, Badagri. I said, so is that really your name? Then she laughed. And then she mentioned her name. Mm -hmm. So even the name she's called by, it's, it's not. not even her name. Mm. Just dehumanized somehow. So you yes. can imagine the, the, the indignity. Yeah that you even take the name away from that 15-year-old. Mm. She has never stepped in a school wow. at age 15. Yeah, some of them, they, that, that's what happens. That some, within. some, their parents know, okay, go and work with this person. Their parents is collecting like, salaries yeah. for yeah, the job that they are so doing. The are I, it has happened to me. <laughs> so it has happened yeah. to me. The lady said that we should be sending the ladies the guest salary to Everything. her. And I said, no, I won't do that. Somebody cannot be working for me, and then you are the one. Mm, she said, you the want money. to save it for her. So I said, no, we'll open an account for her. Let it be saved there. <laughs> In the case of Benin that you mentioned, mm -hmm. let's not be deceived that some of them don't know where they are going. I've had <laughs> exactly. cause, I've had cause to ask mm. a cousin, a distance cousin called me. I was like, ah, she wants if I have link to go to abroad. I said, they will use you for prostitution. They say, is it not better than the one I'm doing mm. here? Oh, so, so she's prostitution here. Yeah. A yes. lot of them already know. This is a graduate who, uh -huh. some of them know that when they get there, some of them, they even go to swear oaths. They say, you know, I, you were not forced into this. So that these uh, traffickers know in the event of any problem, they say, look at it. She said she knew what she was going to do. There's even one I'm working on now. Wow. But maybe with time, I'll talk about it. Even in the case of Edu, I mean, Chuka didn't say anything. I don't know if you know. I was just, yeah, I was just going to say that basically there's prostitution already here. And what you're dealing with are people who just want to prostitute abroad. So it's not it's not a case yet. Their eyes are open. It's more lucrative there. So they know what they're going for. I'm going to say, when you say Edu states, because sometimes people don't want to mention Edu states, I don't think it's necessarily that there's something wrong with Edu states. I think it's just the fact that when people do things, they do things in rings. So you have, you know, fraudsters. You know, you take a lot, a lot of them okay. embrace, you know, this, uh, this thing. Uh. Right, I know this can go on and on and on, right. Well, some practices should be subject to a zero-tolerance policy. We advocate to narrow down and eliminate the room for operation. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll be reporting for duty to raise those issues that matter to all of us, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that. 
mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.